Lenox are an example of our genuine hometown, the Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. Enjoy the game, and go Sailors! The team of Mountain View Car Wash and Detailing Professionals is proud to be supporting Sailor Sports this season. Whether a basic wash or a full detail, we know that the key to providing you with excellent service is teamwork and attention to detail. So while the Sailors are focusing on cleaning up the competition this season, we will be focusing on cleaning up your vehicle. With affordable washes and a wide variety of detail services, we have the game plan to fit your budget needs. We are located at the corner of Highway 40 and Trafalgar Drive. The Mountain View Car Wash, where there are no Hail Marys, just awesome touch. Dances. Celebrations, formerly known as In Celebration of Kids, is open Wednesday through Sunday from 11 to 7. Check out the brand new candy store with nostalgic goodies and awesome additions to the arcade like air hockey, dig dug, and more. Celebrations has a great selection of kids' toys, apparel, and gifts. The cafe upstairs offers 25 flavors of Hawaiian shaved ice. Book your party today at SteamboatCelebrations.com or call 879-3333. Celebrations, located in downtown Steamboat. Fun for kids of all ages. It's time now for your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. My name is James Bogan. I am a senior. My number is 32. My position is a shooting guard. I've been playing basketball for six years. I also run cross country and track outside of school and sports. I'm also involved in my church as a leader for the younger kids. I like to go to college at University of Wyoming after two years at Colorado Northwestern Union College. I will not be playing any sports in college. I will just try to get my degree. I see myself in 10 years as being a game or any parks and wildlife officer. My favorite subject in school is math. My favorite movie is Jurassic Park, the original. I like this movie because it's a original movie that I just enjoy. Last summer I worked at an auto bot store to work off my car and I ran cross country to help myself. My goal for this season is just have a fun time. What I will remember most about the sailors is how oriented we are as a team program. We don't see ourselves as individuals or seniors. We all see ourselves as sailors and that helps us. James Bogan, senior, proud to be a sailor. That was your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. This is Skip Deardorff from Alpine Lumber here in Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company and is committed to being the best supplier of materials and related services to the professional builder and homeowner throughout the Yampa Valley, offering lumber and building materials, hardware, paints, and stains. And we are proud to support Taylor's Basketball. Easy to find Alpine Lumber. Located on Pine Grove Road, past Walgreens, Alpine Lumber, boy owned and operated, contractor's choice, the homeowner's home. Hot Stuff Arthur Home is locally owned and operated, featuring all things heat, fireplaces, stoves, outdoor living and more, and always providing quality expert service. Give them a call today at 879-7614 to schedule a service appointment or consultation for a whole new look. Hot Stuff proudly supports Steamboat Sailors Basketball and are happy to keep the locals in the valley safe and warm. Hot Stuff Arthur Home, located just off of Highway 40 next to Walgreens. Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM is brought to you by the Valley Bay. Steamboat Ace Hardware, Rockwood Auto Zone, Mountain Mattress and Furniture, Steamboat Resorts by Women Vacation Rental, and the Bailey Group with Colorado Group Realty. Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM at 105.7 and SteamboatRadio.com. Now, let's go to the booth for the call of Steamboat Sailors Basketball. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lowen Epstein, live in the booth here at Kelly Mead Gymnasium on a chilly Tuesday evening where your Steamboat Spring Sailors are getting set for tip-off in what should be a fun one. Cole Train Rivalry, the Moffat County Bulldogs come to town and they look to take on this one and two Sailors team who this weekend in the Steamboat Shootout couldn't quite get it done against some pretty prolific teams such as Colorado Academy. In the booth, I'm with Ryan Hansen. Ryan, Sailors 
you know, you went down and you watched them in Golden as well. This is a team that's got a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of new aspects of it, and a lot of working components. I mean, what have you seen from this team this year that, that you really enjoy? And what have you seen that you think they need to make some adjustments with? Yeah, you, I see, as you said there, kind of the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows to some degree, you know. They are really a good team when they're scoring inside out with, you know, big 6'8", Eric Pollard in there, you know. Once he gets things going, then that kind of opens things up for the shooters, namely Jake Kreis and Connor Hanson, Ethan Piles off the catch near the black line even, you know. Just those nice pass outs, those quick pings, and some things they got to improve on is, you know, that defensive communication that the Sailors are typically known for has kind of been lackluster up to this point. The defense itself has been all right, but the communication is what it's really based on, so that's something that they really need to focus on tonight, playing as one team rather than five individuals. So, Ryan, a couple roster moves as the starting five for the Sailors come out onto the floor. Jake Kreisig, the six foot four junior, is getting the start here tonight. Didn't have a lot of minutes in those first three games of the shootout. Jackson Metzler also replacing Connor Hansen on the floor here tonight. Metzler, another junior who's had a pretty good season thus far. He's a good three-point shooter, and he's got a big basketball IQ. And off the tip-off, it'll be out of bounds. The Sailors are going to start with it first. It'll be Dawson Linquist from the far side. Linquist is going to give it to Piles, and Piles, remember, Ryan, Piles' count tonight is 20. Anything less than 20, make sure you say something to him, say something to him if you see him in town. Metzler handles it, far side, top corner. It's Pollard at the top of the key. Quickly now the Sailors ring it around the horn. It's going to be Metzler into the corner. Piles pump fakes, drives in. Euro step, reverse layup, can't get it to go. And the putback from Eric Pollard is the first bucket of the game. Sailors take a 2-0 lead. Quickly now, the Bulldogs wearing new jerseys that they got this season. These jerseys all black with white numbers and gray piping down the sides. I think they look pretty fresh. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, you know, a uh, pretty new look. Typically, the uniforms have a lot of a lot of white and blue primarily, but these are these are really good looking for sure. Landon Nahara with a bank shot to get it going for Moffat County. 2-2 now. Here's Jake Kreisick. He's exciting. Starting tonight. Cross-court pass. It's Linquist in the corner. Inside now to Pollard. He shoots it out. Kreisick for three. Buries it. Jake Kreisick. Money. 5-2. Sailors looking to speed it up here in the first quarter and take a commanding lead. I know that that's the goal here for Coach Van Dahl. Put your foot on their throat and just do not stop pressing as Nahara gets another one. Nahara makes it a 5-4 game. He's got the first two buckets for Moffat County. Ethan Piles handles it near side top corner. At the top of the key, it's going to be Kreisig around the corner now to Metzler. Here's Linquist. Deep three. That one's off as Moffat County comes away with the board. Ensuing pass is picked off by Linquist. He pushes the envelope and then he misses his man, Eric Pollard. They just went back down the they just went back and forth down the court in three passes there, both teams. 6-0 when six minutes left to play in the first, 5-4. It's Nahara. Pretty big lineup here for Moffat County. Big beefy kids. As this is going to be tough for the Sailors strength-wise. Nahara just banging him off the glass here early as he's got six. Yeah, kind of attesting to their strength. Like, for example, Wesley Counts can he can put a dunk down if if given the lane. Landon Nahara, the big center, number 30 for Moffat County. This Moffitt County team is young too, Ryan. The only senior on this team, Jared Chacon. Everyone else a sophomore or a junior. Sailors looking to handle it here. It's Ethan Piles at the top of the key. Five and a half to play. Linquist near side, top corner. Gives it up to Eric Pollard. Pollard inside. It's Metzler quickly. Linquist three ball. Up and away. No good. And... Pollard was trying to get the second attempt, couldn't quite hang on to it, and that ball goes out of bounds. 
Wesley Counts will throw it in for the Bulldogs. Wesley Counts over to Logan Hafey. Hafey now back out to Miles Simpson. Simpson inside, puts up a shot, tried to get it over the top of Piles, nothing going there. And Linquist just runs with it. Linquist, Kreisig, three ball. Oh, he could have been fouled there. Yeah, there, was, there was contact behind the line. The hair on the other end now for Moffitt County. Aaron pass there. That'll be an over and back call. Platoon change here for the Sailors. Connor Hansen getting in the game here along with Devin Crawford. And Granger Rowan getting in there too. And Granger Rowan, that's right. Granger Rowan. He's been he's been a pretty decent force thus far as well. He's a great shooter from mid-range. He's got a lot of length to him. Rowan, I've been impressed with a lot this season. He handles it underneath the basket. He'll try to post up, and he's just going to get denied by Wesley Counts. Second attempt from Crawford, no good as well. Sailors with nothing going on the high percentage shots here early. 6-5, they're down. 4-16 left to play. Ball's tipped out by Piles. Moffitt County's going to handle it. Wesley counts on the inbounds pass in the offensive zone. Dishes it out to Miles Simpson. Back inside to counts, and he flies forward for the bucket. 8-5, Sailors down by three. A lot of, lot of friends and family of the Moffitt County faithful have made the trip here tonight. I mean, there's almost just as many people in the Moffitt County section of the stands as there is for Steamboat. And a good block there from Connor Hansen. Two blocks for the Sailors, and they come away with it. So some good defensive prowess for the Sailors. Hansen pulls up. Can't get that to fall. Rowan tips it away, and now here's a fast break for Craig. Behind the back pass there. And this, is, this looks similar to the girls' game, Ryan. Just back and forth, a lot of turnovers. Rowan gets tied up with it and gets it out to Ethan Piles. Quickly now, Hanson, he was gonna pull it from 30 feet, instead dishes it over back to Rowan, and now Rowan along the far side, now up top to Devin Crawford. Here's Linquist behind the line. Here's Hanson off the front iron, a deep three ball, and he'll drop back on defense. I was talking to Hanson today about it, I said, you know, you, you got benched for Jackson Metzler, he's gonna start for you here today. How does it make you feel? And he told me, he said that he's going to shoot everything. He said the only reason I can, the only way that I can get back into the coach's eyes as a starter is to shoot a lot. And if I shoot a lot, hopefully I can make a lot. So Connor Hansen starting 0 for 2 on the day, but nonetheless, I like the confidence. Yeah, looking to get it rolling. Sailor, you know, Sailor's in the midst of a timeout. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, known as a shooter typically on the offensive end, that's his big contribution to the team and has been since his freshman year when he played quite a solid amount of varsity for a freshman. Got quite a few three-point buckets as a freshman. That's kind of been his role on the team, and he's played it fairly well, but senior year coming in, going to have to play kind of that ball handler role alongside Ethan Piles. So Hanson off the rip, 10-5. Piles is going to take it up for the Sailors. And Moffitt County, when, when they called the timeout, I'm sure you could hear it through our microphones. It was loud in here. Moffitt County doing a nice job here early against the Sailors as Eric Pollard draws the foul. That's the first foul for either team so far this game. And it goes against Miles Simpson in the post. Piles will inbound it. Dawson Linquist takes a seat on the bench as does Devin Crawford and Granger Rowe, and Kellen Adams getting in here pretty early. Kreisig does as well. Kreisig in the corner, Hanson wide open, it's Pollard, and he goes up for two. Good find there from Connor Hanson, as it looked like he was thinking about shooting that. Instead, he dishes it off, and it's Pollard with the easy lay-in. In the corner, it's Logan Hafey. Shot no good. Sailors pull it away, 2.24 on the clock. Piles on the other end, stutter step, crossover. Euro, and he can't get that one to go. Nahara was there for the block. And Nahara inter throws it away. It's Kreisig going up for two. He can't get that to fall. 
And we're just going back and forth. Another turnover. It's on the ground. Kevin Adams pokes it away. And the Sailors have it back again. Unbelievable. Turnover after turnover for both teams. I mean, we just saw like five empty possessions there, Ryan. <laughs> Got to really slow it down. Piles kind of motion to his team. Got to take it down a notch. Kind of get things more set in the offense rather than just quick shooting it off the first pass up the floor as both teams are doing. So now an errant pass goes out of bounds, piles to Hanson. That doesn't work out. And so the Sailors back on defense now. It's Chris Maniotis. Maniotis works it around the horn to Ryan Peck. Peck the quarterback for this Moffat County boys team. He had a stellar year, sophomore quarterback. As a nice bucket there for Moffat County, it's Nahara again. He's got eight, nearing double digits. 120 to go in the first. Kellen Adams, crossover dribble. Steps back, Hanson, inside, Pollard. Back out to Piles, runs off the pick. Looking for the pick and roll. Here's Kellen Adams wide open for three off the back iron. Kreisig corrals the rebound, and Kreisig just throws it away. The second over and back call of a game here, and we're only in the first, first quarter. So a lot, of, a lot of uneasiness, I think, with both teams. I mean, they're just both so antsy and so amped up. They just they can't really do anything to perfection, neither of them. And I get that it's finals and things like that. It's a Tuesday night game, which is also odd. <laughs> but the Sailors got to clean it up here down 12-7 with a minute to play. In the corner, it's Wesley Counts. Steps back. Counts over to Simpson. And another errant pass there as Simpson was looking for Jordan Carlson. And he couldn't corral it. Sailors force another turnover. 49 seconds to play in the first. It's Kellen Adams running point guard. Adams getting his first varsity minutes this season. He had a wide open shot. He drives in along the baseline. Kellen Adams out to Eric Pollard now. Working around the horn. They almost lose it. Dawson Linquist handles it. Now down low to Metzler for three. And Metzler can't get it to go. Ball's out of bounds. Tipped by Jake Kreisig. And Moffitt County handles it with 26 on the clock. Logan Hafey over to Manny Otis. Now it's Miles Simpson. Simpson works around. A foul is going to be called here. That goes against Jake Kreisig as he reached in trying to get into the passing lane there. 16 seconds on the, excuse me, 18 seconds rather on the clock in the first quarter for the Sailors. 12 7, Moffitt County leads. Stolen away by Linquist. Quickly now he finds Kreisig. Kreisig pulls the three from way downtown. It rims out. Nine seconds on the clock. It's ticking. Five now. Quick work from Moffat County here. And it's going to be stolen away at the last moment by the Sailors. And that will do it for this first quarter. That was, a, that was maybe the oddest quarter of basketball I have ever called, Ryan. Yeah, a lot of... A lot of fast pace, but physical basketball. A lot of air and passes. A lot of kind of jittery. It, it just looked messy to me. Yeah, exactly. You know, and a, a few, they're, let, they're really letting them play tonight. As you saw, Thane Kitchen and Piles get locked up for a no call there as they were fighting for that there for a second. But a lot of physical basketball being played for sure. And Landon Nahara... The big center for Moffitt County, obviously the MVP thus far. Eight points in that first quarter. I mean, he scored the first eight consecutive points. Got four buckets, reeled off real, real quick there. As the Sailors looking to set some sort of lineup. I know that going inside the Pollard, Eric Pollard was looking. They were getting some pretty decent looks off of that. But I think that you want to keep... You, if you're Coach Vandal, you want to keep telling your shooters to shoot. I want Ethan Piles to take more shots. I want Connor Hanson to take more shots. And I want Jake Kreisig to handle it in the paint as much as I can. Yeah, because Jake Kreisig's got that height, and he really can shoot over most of the defenders on the opposition other than Landon Nahara. But Nahara on the offensive end is 
one of those guys that can grab you a board and then take it full court and either drive it down the lane, get a nice finish as he makes a nice mid-range right there to get into double digits. He can bring it down and pass a Nikola Jokic style of player. He can really do most things. Oh, what a move from Ethan Piles. He couldn't. He couldn't figure it out, though, as he got to the rim and couldn't quite score there. But Ethan Piles with a nifty with a nifty move to get to the basket. And ball's tipped out on the defensive end for the Sailors. Moffitt County handles it with 7.29 to play in the first half. And a defensive steal there from Jake Kreisig as he looked like he didn't even realize his own length. Comes up with the ball in his hands. And Piles is going to yell out the play to his troops at the top of the key. And this one stolen away. It's it's Miles Simpson for two. Simpson makes it a 16 to 7 game. Referee is going to call a timeout. It's going to be a delay of game on Black there. I'm pretty sure Miles Simpson just gave the ball a little tap there, but. I think it went further than he wanted it to. It kind of went down the sideline, and that's cause for a delay of game, which is just a result of possession as it, as it would have been. So Ethan Piles brings it up beyond midcourt. It's handled by Jackson Metzler. He runs off the pick. Metzler behind the three-point line. Inside to Pollard. He goes up and grabs it. And that's the perfect way to utilize your big man right there, Eric Pollard, for two. 16-9. to nine. That was a pretty play. The best play all game by the Sailors. Nahara fading away. No good. Metzler comes up with it. Crosses over. Oh, man. Jackson, Jackson Metzler. Little AI. Little deke there. I like it. Metzler near side top corner. Number 20, the junior. Dribbles with his right hand. Drives. Kicks it to Linquist in the corner. And he's going to get tornadoed up. Gives it back to Pollard, drives in, and Pollard draws the foul. Flex your muscles, Eric Pollard, the 6'8 junior. Just using all of his mass, just getting up under the defender there and just kind of bringing him up with the shoulder, getting the contact, but ultimately drawing the foul rather than causing a charge there just because the opposition was moving as well. Eric Pollard hits the first one. Granger Rowan checks in here, as does Devin Crawford. Dawson Linquist takes a seat, and Jackson Metzler will too. Pollard has one more. Jake Kreisig on the floor, along with Granger Rowan. Pollard at the free throw line. And Devin Crawford and Ethan Piles. Pollard goes two for two. Make it, a, make it 16 to 11. 6.15 to go in the first half. It's Craig, it's Moffitt County, the Bulldogs, struggling. They lose it, out of bounds, and it's awarded to Steamboat. So Piles will take it up for Steamboat. Sailors down by five. Barely eclipsing ten points just th- th- thus far. That ball's almost stolen away. Granger Rowan for three. Oh, you bet. You bet. All day, Granger Rowan knocks it in from 25 out. And Nahara having words with the referee. A delay game on White now. So now a delay game called against the Sailors. Uh, I, I don't really see the point behind the call there. <laughs> We've had two over and backs and now two delay games, Ryan. As... Quickly, it's Wesley Counts driving in for two more. 18 to 14, Sailors trail by four, five and a half to play. Piles spins around, goes behind his back. It's rowing around the around the horn. Inside, they give it to Pollard. Quickly, Kreisig, pump fake. Pollard posts up, off the backboard. Can't get that to fall. Nahara trying to push it. Pull up three. No good there. Second attempt blocked by Kreisig. Wesley Counts just got caught up between Kreisig and the backboard. Sailors back where they started. Five minutes on the clock. 
Kreisig near side top corner. Back out to Rowan. Here's Piles. Deep ball. No good. Rowan flies in for the board. Dishes it out to Kreisig. It's stolen away. Pollard comes up with it. Back out to Piles. He drives in. No good and a foul. Sailors just peppering this Moffitt County defense. And let me tell you, Moffitt County has definitely withstood the test this far. Great hustle play by Granger Rowan. I mean, I know you saw that there sprinting to the E in Steamboat on the baseline. Mid-air catch, turnaround, pass out to Jake Kreising there. Just a real show of athleticism and uh, effort play there. Connor Hansen checks in. Devin Crawford Chuck checks out. There's a whistle on the floor. That's Jordan Carlson getting called for the foul. Sailors will inbound it here. It'll be Piles out to Kreisig. Kreisig pulls the three and he got it in the face of Miles Simpson. The disrespect. 18-17, Sailors pull within one. Simpson on the other end, answers. And you know that he liked that right in front of the Sailors student section. They were chirping him big time over there. Pollard, he's got three on him. And they get him for a travel as he goes up, and he knew it. He did the, he did the travel signal as he was walking away. He knew it. And, but that was one heck of a play there, nonetheless, by, by Pollard. 21-17. Quickly. Nahara steps back, pulls the J. Wanted the foul. No good. Ball's tipped out. Stays with Craig. As you see... Fane Kitchen, number 22, and with the red shoes on right now, kind of a, a point guard resembling a young Ethan Piles, you know, two pretty skilled point guards that really wear their emotions on their sleeves and kind of use it to fuel their game a little bit. Sailors intervene with the inbounds pass, a dart all the way across the court. Piles finds Hanson. He's getting pushed out of bounds, and Thane Kitchen comes up with it. Kitchen splits the defense. Other end, that one's good. You better count it for Jared Chacon. 23-17. Sailors do not want to lose this game. Inside, it's Granger Rowan. Back out to Hanson. Deep three. Can't get it to fall. Kreisig's there for the rebound, but they're going to say he stepped out. It's a nice rebound, though. A little tip-off from Granger Rowan there. He kind of filled in after him. Let me tell you, Ryan, this, this Moffitt County team has walked into Kelly Meek and just punched the Sailors in the mouth. I don't think they were expecting this. Nahara dishes it. Chacon for three. No good there. Piles gets the rebound. Sends it away into the arms of Moffitt County. And another missed shot there by Ryan Peck. Piles brings it beyond midcourt. Ethan Piles gives it up to Jake Kreisig. Kreisig now over to Pollard. Pollard back out. Kreisig steps behind the three-point line. And he puts that one up no good. Ranger Rowan was there for the second go at it. He gets fouled. 2.42 on the clock. Granger Rowan at the free throw line. Sailors 1-2 and two on the season so far. Last time we were over the airwaves, we were calling a game in which they lost by 12 points to Colorado Academy, Ryan. And this is another team that's big physically, just like Colorado Academy was. This is a good shooting team as well. Sailors need to strap it up on the defensive end, I think, as they take a timeout right here. Yeah, I know. As you look at the roster, you see some real height. You know, 6'3", 2", it's like 6'3", 6'2", and yet another 6'3", player. That consistent size throughout the lineup. And, you know, Wesley counts, as we were talking about earlier, earlier is a very explosive athlete. He can really... He plays very vertical, as you saw, when he gets on the inside there, and he elevates to get those layups above a taller defender like Eric Pollard, who's trying not to foul on the layup. 23-17, Sailors down. 
2.42 left to go. Sailors have come within a point or two a couple of times, but for the most part, this Moffat County team has kept them at arm's distance. As it's Granger Rowan at the free throw line, he'll have a couple. Connor Hanson, Ethan Piles, Eric Pollard, Dawson Linquist all in the game along with Rowan. Eric Pollard putting together a pretty nice game here tonight as well. Rowan free throw, no good. Pulled away by the Bulldogs. Quickly now it's going to be Nahara working it up the far side. Nahara cross court pass. That's a bullet. Gives it over to Chacon. Now Nahara back outside looking for his guard. And a nice little slippery play there by Logan Hafey to get to the rack for two more. 25-17, 2.22 to play. Ethan Piles inside to Pollard. Pollard in the corner. It's Granger Rowan. Rowan working versus Hafey. Gives it up, up to Dawson Linquist. Linquist trying to get in, and he gets called for a travel. So two travels forced on this Sailors team in the paint, too. I mean, that's just a defensive. That's a great defensive effort by the Bulldogs. Yeah, forcing Dawson to have to travel there to try to get the open look. Thane Kitchen now. Works it over to Wesley Counts. Counts, far side, top corner. Bounce pass over to Nahara. He thought about pulling the trigger. Pump fakes. Sends it back to Chacon. Here's Hafey stepping off the guard, off his dribble, and he completely misses that one. Chacon misses the rebound, and now with 140 to play, the Sailors throw it out of bounds. Sailors throw it out of bounds. 25-17 to go in the first half. Excuse me, 25-17, 1.38 to go in the first half. Thane Kitchen guarded by Hanson. Kitchen gives it inside. It's Hafey. Wide open shot for Wesley Counts. Can't convert for three. 124 remaining. Here's Hanson. Rowan back to Hanson. Drives in. And his shot gets blocked. Hanson will head to the line for two. 117 to play. Smart move by Hanson there, you know. They're guarding him as a shooter, you know, coming into the game, shooting around 47% from three so far, so a pretty dead three. They have to come out past the three-point line to guard him, as you saw in the last game. He hit that near white line three, fresh out of halftime as he hits his first free throw. But as I was saying, when they come out to guard him close like that, it's kind of smart to beat him off the dribble because then, you know, things are going to open up for Eric Pollard off of that nice little bounce pass. Exactly. He's creating a lot of space. Hanson hit his first free throw. He'll have one more. Kellen Adams checks into the game here, as does Jake Kreisig. So Hanson goes two for two from the line. 25-19, Sailors still down as they are barely, hopefully, able to eclipse 20 points in this half. Hanson stole it and then lost it. Inside, it's going to be Moffitt County, and the missed layup is no good. That was Jordan Carlson. Couldn't finish it off there. Sailors get it back. One minute to play. Kellen Adams brings it up for the Sailors. Looks to his left, finds Hanson. Now in the corner, it's Linquist. Linquist up top, it's going to be Pollard. Pollard back to Kreisig, now over to Hanson once more. Connor Hanson runs off the block, kicks it out to Linquist. Pump fake, pull up Jay, buries it. And that's a consistent shot for Dawson Linquist. He knows he can make it, and he's confident in that shot. Way to go for the senior there. Sailors crawling back into this one, 25-21. Inside, and one, Wesley counts. Try to make it a three-point play at the line. You know, just talking to Wesley in the offseason, because as you, as you know, he played for the high-altitude team a little while back. Talking to him in the offseason, a big, a big thing for him was kind of getting stronger, kind of attaining that more varsity athleticism because he's a skilled player. He has a nice stroke. He can really set into a three ball, but, you know, always been a, a very good track athlete, kind of putting that athleticism together with his game this year, and he's looking really nice out on the court. Ten seconds to play here for the Sailors. Kellen Adams handles it as 
He gives it off to Eric Pollard. Four seconds now. The countdown commences. Here we go. Step back three. At the buzzer, it was Linquist. Couldn't get it to fall. And the Sailors, down by seven, are going to head into the locker room with a surprisingly tough task on their hands tonight, Ryan. For Ryan Hanson, I'm Lowen Epstein in the booth at Kelly Meek Gymnasium. Keep your dials locked in to 105.7 KTYV. You can also catch us on the World Wide Web at steamoradio.com. We'll talk to you after the break. Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM is brought to you by... Hot Mountain View Car Wash. Steamboat Ace Hardware. Mountain Mattress and Furniture. Steamboat Resorts by Wooded Vacation Land. And the Daily Group with Colorado Group Realty. Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM at 105.7 and SteamboatRadio.com. Hey, Sailor basketball fans. P.J. Borson of the Yampa Valley Bank here to thank you for supporting our hometown basketball team. The Yampa Valley Bank is proud to support all of our student athletes and to sponsor this broadcast of Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM. Steamboat High School Athletics are an example of our genuine hometown. The Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. Enjoy the game and go Sailors! Managing local land involves balancing resources such as agriculture, water, and wildlife. I'm Brian Ripley, and I have over 16 years of experience managing ranch resources as your neighbor here in Route County. I'm the ranch and rural property specialist for the Paoli Group with the support of Colorado Group Realty. Put your trust in someone that has the practical experience and knowledge to help you with all of your ranch, rural, and equine property needs. I aspire to help you reach all of your real estate goals. I'm Brian Ripley, and you can find me at thepaolegroup.com in the ranch division. Steamboat Ace is a proud sponsor of the Steamboat Sailors. That's not the only way Ace supports the kids in our community. Hi, Bridget here from Steamboat Ace. We are so proud to be a part of the Steamboat community. It's our priority to support and encourage positive activities and hobbies for our youth. How do you do that? In addition to local scholarships, Ace invites the sailor community to fundraise for their activity or club by providing a great venue and supplies to host a hot dog or bake sale. I love it. Every weekend I can shop at Ace and support a great cause. Steamboat Ace, you're proud to support the Steamboat Sailor Shopping List. Hi, Steamboat friends. This is Charlie Green from Mountain Mattress and Do you ever notice how grumpy your parents get when health is arrived? Or how mean your big sister gets when you have to share her room for the weekend? I've got the secret to keep everyone happy. Stop by Mountain Mattress and Furniture on Loggers Lane for the best price and selection. On Serta, Tempur-Pedic, and Simmons Mattresses. Plus a great selection of linens and even comfy mattresses for the pull-out couch. Everyone sleeps, everyone stays happy, and a great mattress from Mountain Mattress and Furniture is the secret. It's time now for your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KT. Hey, my name's Jake. I'm a junior of high school. I'm number 32. Uh, I play wind, mercy, some sun, all around. I also like to play with uh, tools and video games, stuff like that. I also have a school sports muscle involved with my family and friends and all that stuff. Uh, I'd like to go to college at CU or CSU. I'll play in college if the opportunity presents itself. I would obviously be playing basketball. Uh, in 10 years, I see myself going to school for business, hopefully looking to start one. My favorite subject in school is history because it relates to everything that's going on today. Uh, my favorite movie is Escape Plan. I like the movie because there's a lot of action and it keeps you thinking. Last summer, I played a little travel ball and hung out. Uh, my goal for this season is to stay healthy and improve from last year. My goals for life are to not work too much and have no regrets. What I will remember most about being a sailor is the teammates I've met. Jay Chrysler Jr., proud to be a sailor. That was your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. This is Skip Yerdorf from Alpine Lumber here in Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company that is committed to being the best supplier of materials and related services to the professional builder and homeowner throughout the Yampa Valley, offering lumber and building materials, hardware, paints, and stains. And we are proud to support Sailors Basketball. Easy to find Alpine Lumber, located on Pine Grove Road, past Walgreens, 
Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated, contractor's choice, the homeowner's I'm Terry. And this is Phil from Russell's Auto Salon. If you need help with your auto collision repair, we make it easy. Just bring me an email and a claim number, and I'll take care of the rest. Russell's Auto Salon, Colorado's premier collision center, leading the industry in technology, where we've gone green with Enviro-based paint, and we are proud supporters of Steamboat Sailors Sports. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always need the best. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon. 879-1515. Steamboat Resorts not only offers a large array of properties that can host your next Steamboat vacation, we have been giving back to the Yampa Valley for more than 30 years. Hi, this is Todd Seatkin, Executive General Manager for Steamboat Resorts. Steamboat Resorts and its local employees have been partnering with our community since 1980. From Sailor Sports to the Pro Rodeo Series, Route County 4-H, and Yampa Valley Sustainability Council, to name just a few. Call us at 879-8000 or go online to SteamboatResorts.com. Steamboat Resorts, your local live. Leader. Hi, Mom. Is Claire's birthday party today? Me again, Mom. Where did I put my history book? Hi. Sorry, forgot one last thing. Sometimes it's hard to concentrate. At school, I start looking out the window, and then I forget what I was supposed to be thinking about. I know it seems like I don't care, but I do. It's just difficult for me. Love you, Mom. Bye. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Brought to you by understood.org and the Ad Council. It's time now for your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. My name is Josie Foot and I'm a junior. My number is 33 and I play post. I've played basketball for four years. I also like to play soccer. Um, outside of school and sports, I am involved with NHS and Model UN. I'd like to go to college somewhere on the West Coast, and I will not play sports in college. Um, in 10 years, I see myself um, having a job, hopefully. My favorite subject in school is math. My favorite movie is Surf's Up. I like this movie because of Chicken Joe. Um, last summer, I went to France. So in France, I saw the Women's World Cup, and America won. Woo! Go USA! My goals for this season are to score points and not let points in and let George knock it mad at me. Um, my goals for life are to um, have a job somewhere and um, have a family. What I will remember most about being a sailor is all the good times we had as a team. I'm Josie Foote, a junior, and I'm proud to be a sailor. That was your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. Hot Stuff Hearth and Home is locally owned and operated, featuring all things heat, fireplaces, stoves, outdoor living, and more, and always providing quality expert service. Give them a call today at 879-7614 to schedule a service appointment or consultation for a whole new look. Hot Stuff proudly supports Steamboat Sailors basketball and are happy to keep the locals in the valley safe and warm. Hot Stuff Hearth and Home, located just off of Highway 40 next to Walgreens. Patina Mountain View Car Wash and Detailing Professionals is proud to be supporting Sailor Sports this season. Whether a basic wash or a full detail, we know that we provide you with excellent service as teamwork and attention to detail. So while the sailors are focusing on cleaning up the competition this season, we'll be focusing on cleaning up your vehicle. With affordable washes and a wide variety of detail services, we have the game plan to fit your budget and needs. We are located at the corner of Highway 40 and Chicago Drive. Mountain View Car Wash, where there are no Hail Marys, just awesome. It's time now for your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. Hi, my name is Katie. I'm number 11 at the CBH. I play shooting guard with the guard. I also like to run for the guard. Outside of school sports, I'm also, actually, no, I don't have a lot of sports. <laughs> I would like to go to college and ask for advice. Probably. That's a hard question. Will I play in college? Probably. In 10 years, I have no idea what I'm going to do with myself. I can't even figure out why I want to go to college, so. My favorite movie yeah. is in Spider Man Home Community. Oh, I found it. I saw Spider Man Home Something about Mary. <laughs> I think it's called something about Mary. No, is that, is that the name of the movie? Yeah, bro, I'm like, I'm an absolute honest, like dog. It's the funniest movie I've ever yeah, watched. Honest and watch it. Bro. Last 
summer. Oh my gosh, I went to a nerd camp at school. It was the greatest experience ever. Absolutely loved it. And my goal for the season is to be able to play. Um, I tore my ACL in April, so I hope that I uh, am able to get back and play this year. And my goals for life are to be happy. And what I love the most about being a sailor is my time with the All the team dinners that we've had, all the opportunities they've taken to make fun of me. My name is Katie. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm proud to be a sailor. That was your Steamboat Sailor Spotlight on 105.7 KTYV Sports on FM. This is Steamboat Sailor Spotlight. Alpine Lumber, the Quarter Slides, Alpine Car Wash, Russell Dog Salon, Steamboat Ace Hardware, UC Health at Yampa Valley Medical Center, Chris Puckett at the Downtown Edward Jones Office, Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals, and Mountain Mattress and Furniture. Let's go to the booth for the call of Steamboat Sailors Basketball. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lowen Epstein along with Ryan Hansen at Kelly Meek Gymnasium as we bring you into third quarter action here where the Steamboat Spring Sailors are taking on the Bulldogs of Moffat County. And before we were able to come into this game here, Jake Kreisig, we're about 50 seconds into this third quarter. Jake Kreisig hit a black line 30-foot three-pointer I mean, it was incredible. Got the crowd rocking and, and had the entire Moffat County section completely silent. That was big enough for Moffat County, to take, Moffat County to take a timeout. And now here we come out of the timeout. Ryan, this is a team that a lot of people thought the Sailors would be able to roll. And sure enough, they've proven a lot of people wrong, came out here, and they've definitely got some fight to them. What do you like about this Moffat County team? Over the years, you know, I've been able to see Coach Steve Maniota as the head coach of the Craig Bulldogs really work and you know he really knows these kids he knows Wesley Counts, he knows Thane Kitchen, he knows what they're capable of and how much he can really get out of them and you know as you can see his, uh, his coaching is certainly paying off as of late Nahara and Linquist trading buckets on either end of the floor. Moffat County has it back now. Here's Wesley Counts. In the corner, that's Jordan Carlson, and he's going to get pushed out of bounds. He's having some words with the ref, saying that that should have been a foul. The Sailors are going to get it back down by four. 30 to 26. This is turning into one heck of a ball game. Kelly Mead Gymnasium, chilly Tuesday evening here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Fadeaway jumper from Eric Pollard. That one's good. He has been hot tonight, Ryan. And it's not like he's playing against anyone that much smaller than him. I mean, Landon Nahara is 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 right up there. I mean, we're talking about a kid who's 6'4", 6'5", as Moffitt County Wesley Counts gets another bucket. Yeah, Landon Nahara, tall but also very burly and also has a lot of experience playing bigger kids from the front range in AAU. Kreisig over to Piles. Piles steps in. Bounce cuts his way to the rack and puts up the shot for two more. Both these teams are starting this second half extremely hot. Both teams are three for four right now from the floor. Turnaround jumper. Carlson, no good. Kreisig flies in for the board. Pulls it away. And that pass is tipped out. Thane Kitchens was there. 32 to 30. Two point game here in the third. Piles fires it inside and pull it. It goes off his face and then off the backboard. And, and Pollard's able to corral it somehow and get it for a, a basket. Thane Kitchen. Long three pointer, not even close. As that ball falls extremely short. He taps his chest and says, my bat. Man, that was a wild play from Piles and, and Pollard. <laughs> Pollard just wasn't really looking for it, and, and Piles threw it in there as hard as he could right off of Pollard's face. And Pollard gets it stolen away on the offensive zone for Steamboat. Pass all the way down, a home run ball, and Miles Simpson is there to finish it off. Miles Simpson... Puts Moffat County back up by two, 34-32, five minutes to play. Metzler, three-pointer, that one's off. Falls out of bounds, Moffat County gets it back. So it looks like both teams come out with a lot of energy. Both teams are sort of running and gunning it, which is definitely entertaining, but not always the best 
way to get points on the board as we just saw two, two players from either team trade trade air ball threes. Yeah, as you said, kind of it's it, the pushing the tempo works extremely well when the shots are falling, but as you saw there, got an open look, just couldn't get it to fall. Fane Kitchen over to Nahara in the corner. And Nahara's been automatic. I mean, he's nearing 16 points on the on the evening now. That's his second baseline jumper of the half. Lane and Nahara have yourself a game. 36-32, Sailors back down by four. They gotta keep playing keep up as this Moffitt County team is definitely setting the pace. Here's Linquist near side top corner. Linquist pulls it out. He's guarded by Nahara. Finds Piles off the screen. Back to Linquist. Pull up three pointer. No good. Moffitt County pulls it away. That's why it counts. Counts gets it up to Nahara. Five on four action. Linquist catches back up and drops into the hole. Platoon, platoon switch getting ready here for the Sailors as Counts puts up a deep three pointer off the window. No good. Metzler's there for the board. He'll take it himself. Metzler, bounce pass. Kreisig inside, and Pollard loses it. Just a bad pass from Kreisig. Pollard's long, but not quite that long, as he can't get his hands on that one. Piles comes out. Linquist comes out, and Metzler comes out. Hanson will check in, as well as Kellen Adams and Granger Rowan. 36-32. Three and a half to play in the third. I mean, who? If you're Nahara, obviously, obvi obviously has the hot hand for Moffat County. If you're Coach Van Dahl, I mean, who who do you put on Nahara? I mean, you you want a bigger matchup like Eric Holler, but Nahara is just so quick off the dribble as well. He's a versatile scorer, and he can space the floor and kind of get those mix matches. So you could give the nod to. Even maybe Granger Rowan getting tough in the, in, on the defensive end there. Three ball there from Miles Simpson and Connor Hansen on the other end is able to respond. That gets the student section on their feet. And once again, Moffitt County is going to be forced to call a timeout here. 39-35, Sailors still trailing by four. Want to say a quick shout out to some of our sponsors here on 105.7 KTYV and on the World Wide Web at steamoradio.com. Keep your dials locked in. The Amber Valley Bank, the Amber Valley's only locally owned bank, member FDIC. Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated, the contractor's choice, the homeowner's friend. Mountain View Car Wash, helping the sailors clean the competition between town and McDonald's on Highway 40. Russell's Auto Salon, your premier full service auto body shop where you always meet by accident. Russell's Auto Salon, 879-1515. Sailors coming out of the timeout. They'll be on the defensive end. Down by four points, 314 to play in the third. Inbounding it for Moffitt County is going to be Jared Chacon. Chacon finds Thane Kitchen. Kitchen comes up the near side. He's guarded by Kellen Adams. Oh, man. Tough bounce pass inside. He tried to find Miles Simpson. Simpson just can't get his hands on that one. And that's another turnover for Craig. Moffitt County backs, drops back into the defensive zone. Kellen Adams will run point guard for the Sailors. Adams, the junior, gives it up to Granger Rowan. Now back to Adams. Adams now over to Connor Hansen, near side top corner. Hansen over to Kreisig. They're not letting anything inside. Finally, they fire one low to Pollard. He gets him with the pump fake and goes back in for two more. He is having the biggest game of his career tonight, Ryan. Yeah, easily, but excellent patience right there. Him knowing they're going to elevate like that to get the block because he does, in fact, have about five inches on Jared there, but... That patience just waiting after the shot fake after let him, let him go by and then just get the easy lay in there. Big man Jordan Carlson's able to answer down low for Moffitt County. 41-37, 2.13 to play. Kreisig pulls it. And Kreisig is unbelievable tonight. He is four for four from three. I mean, this kid is automatic. Did you see the separation on that play? He had a man in his face. He looked like James Harden right there. And he does it on the defensive end. Jay Kreisig comes up with it. And it's stolen away right as I give him props. Nahara picks him off. And a foul 
Carlson heads to the line. That's going to be on Granger Rowan. Jake Kreisig kind of showing that offensive versatility we were talking about last week. Unfortunately, last week coming off the sickness, of course, he couldn't really get as many minutes as he would like to. But uh, as you can see, this game, he's really putting on a show for the Sailors here. Him and Eric Pollard really a nice one-two punch kind of space in the floor and collapsing it down a little bit. Yeah, Coach Van Dahl making sure to let Kreisig run here tonight as... Carlson goes two for two from the stripe. Sailors a three-pointer away from tying this thing up, 43-40. to 40. Competitive game here at Kelly Meek. Buck 39 on the clock. Third quarter action. Lowen Epstein, Ryan Hansen on 105.7 KTYV. Live stream at steamboatradio.com. Here's Kreisig. Kreisig, spin move, fadeaway jumper. Can't get that to go. Rowan pulls it down. Kellen Adams around the horn. It's Kreisig again. Gives it to Hansen. Hansen crossover dribble. Steps back. And he was got. Oh, man. The, the entire gym was about to lose it if he made that shot. Pollard goes up for the, goes up for the bucket, and he gets fouled. I mean, Connor Hansen breaking out the sauce, digging Deep in the grandma's cabinet there, getting that old steak sauce you find in the in the shelf that's been there for seven years. Connor Hansen, he knows that he's had it. And he's showing off here tonight. <laughs> Pollard misses the free throw. Student section in full effect here, all the way from the floor to the rafters. 43 to 40. Sailors with a minute nine to play in the third. Pollard with one more at the free throw line. This one's going to be up and in. Make it a two-point game. Sailors need to do something defensively here and take the reins of this ball game. Here's Fane Kitchen. Kitchen over to Carlson. Carlson cross-court pass in the corner. And a turnover there. The Bulldogs throw it away. Little miscommunication between Miles Simpson and Jared Chacon. Chacon. And that ball goes out of bounds, so 55 on the clock. Here we go, it's Kellen Adams. Adams surveying. Gives it to Hanson, now over to Rowan. In the corner, it's Kreisig. Kreisig, Kreisig back up top to Kellen Adams, now over to Rowan. Slow moving for the Sailors, here we go. It's going to be Rowan, back outside to Hanson. Here's Kreisig, drives with his left hand, gives it to Adams. Now it's Rowan, near side, top corner. Around again, Kreisig thought about pulling the three, decided against it, and it's back into the hands of Adams. Adams with 19 seconds on the clock. It's Rowan. Just some shell work offense here for the Sailors. Can't get anything inside. 10 seconds now. The possession's almost lasted the entirety of this minute. And here's Connor Hansen. Hansen runs off the pick inside, and he just throws it away. And Nahara. Puts up a half-court shot, nothing doing. Connor Hansen in that Sailors offense with a brutal possession there. They got completely eliminated by that Moffat County defense, and that'll take us into the fourth quarter here on 105.7 KTYV. 43-41, Ryan, and this game, I mean, Sailors only had 12 points in the first quarter. They were barely touching 20 points at the end of halftime, and now they just had pretty much a 20-point third quarter as did Moffat County 13 point third quarter for them as well I mean both these teams came out of the locker room straight out of the gates and 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 that was a fun one yeah you know as you can see both teams had made some adjustments adjustments pardon me they're kind of slowing it down more they're getting a little bit more methodical in their offense and the Sailors moving to a 2-3 defense kind of packing it back in looking for less fouls there really slowing their offense down, making them have to work for a good shot there. But on the Sailors' end, they're also doing great things on the offensive side, you know. As you saw, Eric Pollard getting, get, making his free throws there. Jake Kreisig spacing the floor nicely. Things are looking up for both teams, so we're in for a good one here in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter action, Lowen Epstein, Ryan Hansen. Thanks for keeping your dials locked in. If you are just joining us, Sailors, girls team took a loss to Moffat County earlier that game was about a that game was a 20 point blowout Sailors now in a tight one with a crosstown rival Moffat County 43-41 three ball and that's no good from 
Miles Simpson. Kellen Adams going to pull this one out. And there's going to be a pushing call on Fane Kitchen. That's going to get the crowd riled up. As you can see, a bunch of students kind of imitating Kitchen's reaction to that call. He was arguing with the ref, palms up. And from the far side, the Sailors are going to throw it in. It'll be Kreisig. Kreisig having an unbelievable game tonight, as is Eric Pollard. Two young bucks, two juniors with not a lot of varsity minutes under their belt carrying this Sailors team. And that ball goes out of bounds. Stays with Steamboat. Hanson will inbound it. Connor Hanson going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miles Simpson. Now Coach Vandal switches it out. It'll be Kreisig inside to Pollard. And Pollard just loses that one as that ball looked like it was greased up. And on the other end, Wesley Counts tries to get too fancy with it. Gets it stolen by Rowan. Here's Kreisig to the rack. Tried to jelly his way. Gets the rebound. Now he's along the baseline, and he tries to thread it in to Eric Pollard. Nothing doing there. That's stolen away. And Hanson has one go through his hands. And they're going to say it's off Nahara Steamboat Ball. As you see, Steve Maniotis there. Pointing out to Thane Kitchen, trying to make him calm down a little bit. Kitchen could perhaps even get a, a technical if he keeps reacting to the calls the way that he has been. You know, wearing his emotions on his sleeve a little bit tonight, but a really good player, really scrappy athletic on the defensive end and contributing on the offense, creating shots for his own team as well. Yeah, and that's a good point, Ryan, especially when you're in a situation like this. The last thing you want to do is get some silly technical or some silly personal foul, personal foul just because of your emotions. Piles flying to the rack for two. He went in there like Superman, dove all the way, somehow got the shot off, and now the Sailors get a takeaway on defense too. 43 all. It's tied up. Moffat County, rivalry school, Tuesday night. I mean, it can't get any better than this, Ryan. I mean, come on, finals week, man? Three ball, Kreising. And what did you think was going to happen, baby? Jake Kreising, automatic from deep. Nahara, he drives in, but there's a timeout called. Steemo goes up by three. Kreisig putting this team on his back. He's got 20 tonight. Sheesh. Oh, my goodness. Put in Kreisig. Putting in work on the offensive side, obviously, but defensively, you just saw him come up with a, with a pretty big steal and a, a nice little touch pass off the... Off the steal the Granger row and he reeled it back in and then that possession is the one where Jay Kreisig just hit that nice three right there. I've been telling people I've been telling people, Ryan, ever since the fall workout started and I've been coming in here watching these guys get workouts on with Coach Vandal, coming in and watching these practices. I've been telling people, I said Jake Kreisig, man, he's he is the real deal. I mean he's got that he's got that star power, if you will. And tonight, he's putting on a show in in a huge game for for this Sailors team. Great. And that yeah, sorry, that confidence that you spoke on right there. No one trusts his shot more than him, and that's a really important quality to have as someone who could possibly even lead the team in scoring this year as a junior and carrying on into next year. He's going to be a very integral piece of this Sailors squad. 43-46, Kreisig coming back out onto the floor. Young lineup here right now, only one senior, that's Ethan Piles. Eric Pollard, Granger Rowan, Kellen Adams on the floor as well. Here's Nahara, turnaround jumper. Oh my goodness, just when I think Kreisig is having one heck of a game, I turn to my left and I see Nahara hitting turnaround jumpers like that. What a pass inside from Piles. And Pollard's able to finish it off. One thing that's different about tonight, Ryan, than we saw during this tur than than we saw with with Pollard during that Steamboat shootout is that Pollard's making basically all of his high percentage shots. There was instances last weekend where he would miss a layup or he would miss a fast break opportunity, but every time he's been under the basket tonight and he's had a clean attempt at it, he has came through. Oh yeah, he's done an excellent job of you know getting set, getting his base under him, and I mean. Going up with Eric, I don't think there's anybody on the court tonight that could 
really get him off course there in the air because, you know, 6'8", nearing 212, Eric Pollard is a burly boy, and uh, he sure uses it to his, advantage, to his advantage. Sailors on the defensive end, Nahara again. No good, and guess who's there for it? It's Jay Kreisig. Foul's gonna be called. Oh, they're gonna get him for a travel. Oh man, I don't, I don't like the looks of that call at all. Granger Rowan was fighting for that ball and it was kind of in the air and Wyatt, Wesley Counts came in and kind of tipped it away from him and they're gonna get him for steps. Luckily they get it back and here's Rowan on the fast break. They dump it off to Kellen Adams. Now to Piles, cross court. It's Kreisig, he lines it up and he can't get it to fall. The Pollard's there for the board and the Sailors are rolling. 50 to 47. Man, if I would have told you in that first quarter that the Sailors would have 50 points with five minutes to play, you would have told me I was the funniest comedian you've ever met. And they get another takeaway, the Sailors do. Already up by three. Let's see if they can converge. And Ethan Piles tries to go behind his back. Completely missed his target, Granger Rowan. And Coach Van Dahl hangs his head. <laughs> Miles, how many points does he have tonight, Ryan? Uh, I think I'm pretty sure he had that nice layup. I think that was a. I think he's at two out of 20 here with 4:30 left. Piles with a couple points, not quite the 20 he promised. As Carlson goes up for two more for Moffat County, it's a one-point game at Kelly Meek. 4:19 on the clock. Sailors up 50 to 49. Ethan Piles over to Kellen Adams. Adams, haven't seen him shot, shoot a lot, really. He's getting some looks, but it's it's just a confidence thing for, for someone like him, I, th I think, as Pollard gets wrapped up there and he'll draw a foul. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure, as you've seen in the practices, Kellen Adams is one of the better scout guys because, as you know, the, the bench five, the first bench five typically go against the starting five. He's... And he does extremely well against Ethan Piles in practice. He gets good looks and makes most of them. There's a missed shot from Granger Rowan. 50 to 49 as we run with four minutes to play. Crosstown rivalry, Coltrane rivalry, red versus blue, whatever you want to call it. It's a heavyweight matchup at Kelly Meek. Three ball on the other end. That's a foul. Miles Simpson heads to the line for three. And Jay Kreisig wishing he had that one back. Jay Kreisig with his third tonight, and that's really not something you want to see him during the last three minutes of the game. Hopefully he can kind of keep it at bay for the, for the remainder of the game just because he is such a key part of the offense tonight along with Eric Pollard. And these are huge free throws for Miles Simpson as he misses the first one off the front iron. Two more now. Second one he misses as well. And those are huge missed opportunities for the Bulldogs as Carlson heads out for a seat on the bench. Wesley Counts is going to check in, and Simpson's at the line for one more. The six foot one sophomore, Miles Simpson, third free throw. Finally gets it to go, and that knots us at half a hundred. 50 with 347 to play. Sailors looking to take the lead here. Piles crossover dribble, drives with his left. And what a play there by Ethan Piles. I saw him talk, talking with Coach Van Dahl before, while, while Simpson was taking those free throws, and I knew that they were getting ready to let him run there on that next possession. So Piles makes it happen. Coach Van Dahl takes a timeout, and now the Sailors are up 52-50 with three and a half to play. Yeah, a really, really nice move by Ethan Piles there. The same hand, same, same foot. Layup is not an easy shot, but as you saw there, it really worked it. Um, you know, getting Jared Chacon off of his uh, off of his shot blocking game, the messed up his timing here. He couldn't get in there at the same exact time that he wanted to. Obviously, Pyle's a smaller player. Chacon in that situation has the advantage in the in the reach and, and size department. But just a really good move by Piles to kind of get him off his game there. As the Sailors coming out of the timeout here. Little Brooklyn Nets action up here. 
50 to 52. Sailors down by Sailors up by two points rather. 3:37 to play. Sailors would love to come out with a W here as Moffat County, one of the biggest rivals in in school history here. And and man, I'll tell you. The way it seems to me, Ryan, is that Moffat County has sports that they always beat us at, and we have sports that they all that we always beat them at. And for one of for for Steamboat at least, one of those sports that we always beat them at is is basketball. And th these these two crews have played against each other since seventh grade, and now they're at a point where you know they're older in high school, and so the Sailors to come away with a win here. You know, obviously it'd, it'd mean a lot, but it'd mean more because you got to understand that a lot of these kids have been playing together. You know, I mean, a lot of these kids have seen each other at the middle school tournaments back in 7th and 8th grade. Yeah, exactly. They played each other three times a year for like three years. So, you know, they have that familiarity, which just makes the matchup that much sweeter just because of they know what the other person's going to do. So it's just what else can they do? <laughs> Jake Kleisig. Wondering where the foul is, so am I. And he goes up for two more. Kreisig having a career night as Moffat County tries to come back from four down. Here's Nahara behind the three-point line. Works it over to Thane Kitchen. He's got 2.45 left to play. Kitchen over to Miles Simpson. Back to Nahara. Nahara down low, pump fakes, and he'll throw it off of Pollard. He just got himself stuck there in the corner. Had nowhere else to go. And... Wesley Counts is going to throw it in here. Counts from the baseline. Looks up. Finds Thane Kitchen at the top of the key. Kitchen back over to Simpson. Ball's tipped away for a moment. And it goes out of bounds once more. Last touch by the Sailors. 54-50. Sailors up by four. Two and a half to play. 150 seconds to go in this one. Nahara with the shot from the baseline. No good. Ball's on the floor. Granger Rowan pulls it out. Pyle's going to slow it down. He shows off his dribble package. And now it's poked away. That's Wesley Counts drawing the foul. And Pyle's in Thane Kitchen going to have some words here under the basket. As Kitchen nodding his head saying he likes it. He likes the ferocity. He wants the smoke. You can bet on that. As Wesley Counts head to the free, heads to the free throw line shooting two. And they're going to tee up Ethan Piles. And just like, we, just like we said earlier, Ryan, yeah. in a game situation like this, getting a technical foul is not what you need right now. And you can see the frustration from Coach Van Dahl right below us as he's pretty heated. Yeah, the double technical for something uh, pretty relatively childish. It is a double childish. technical, yeah. They, I mean, it, I'm not going to go out and, and, you know, reprimand Thane Kitchen oh, and yeah. Ethan Piles. Yeah. They weren't doing anything that's outside a normal high school comp, but they were just getting in each other's yeah. face, and the refs, these refs were having enough of it. So sure enough, they throw him a double technical. Kitchen's going to get one, too. And, and Manny Otis, Coach Manny Otis, isn't happy with that at all either. So 2.14 to play. They can't, the way a double technical works is it kind of cancels each other out. Nothing's going to happen here except for Wesley Council is still at the free throw line. He's going to shoot a couple. Manny Otis still talking to the referee right below us. Crowd starting to get antsy, wondering what's going on with Counts at the line. So Counts hits the first one. Piles and Kitchen <laughs> in the same area. Now Piles will take a seat on the bench. Linquist checks in the game. I think Kreisig's got to be your go-to man right here, Ryan. Yeah, just as you've seen throughout the game, he's been hitting those contested shots. And if you could get him another open shot, as you saw, once he dials it in, it's... It's just about over then. So Wesley Counts hits both free throws, and now here's Kellen Adams. Adams, the young buck, he loses it on the other end. It's Simpson. He puts up a shot, and they're going to call it for a travel. And that's a huge break for the Sailors. It was a four-on-one opportunity for Moffitt County, and now Simpson's on the ground. He looks to be a little hurt. 
Simpson just lost his footing and he slipped. And they called him for steps. They called him for steps. And now Coach Van Dahl's going to have to take a timeout with 2.04 on the clock. Two point game here at Kelly Meek, 54 52. It, it'll be interesting to see because I know that, you know, we're going down into this late game situation and you can pick and choose the guys that who you want to have the ball in their hands, but I mean, you can't deny the fact that Ethan Piles is one of those guys. So it'll be in interesting to see what Coach Van Dahl does if he puts him back in the game here. Yeah, you know, Ethan Piles, as you said, the most confident player on the team. He really is not afraid to shoot from just about anywhere he and he believes he'll do it as as you heard today promising a 20 point game but coming into the game with a little bit more of a team mentality is quite a few assists and that he's kind of been creating for others like Eric Pollitt for example but you could you could give him those nods as well as Jay Kreising because they both have that range to put the point where they can draw their defenders out all the way to that black line and really help other people get open as well. Yeah, kreisig has got to be in the 25-point range. I don't have a stack guy up here with me, but, I mean, it, I mean, he's hit four, four threes at least, and he's been automatic from everywhere. So Kreisig, I think, is your go-to guy right here. Sailors are going to inbound it up by two. Don't want to have any silly turnovers or gimme buckets. You can miss the shot. There's not an issue with missing the shot, but just don't turn the ball over and don't have... Uh, a low percentage shot that when there's a better open look. So here we go. And right off the bat, Lindquist turns it over inside to Chacon, and Chacon missed the layup. And now there's players all over the ground, and there's a jump ball call. Thane Kitchen wanting it to go to Moffitt, and it's going to be awarded to the Sailors. So a big break there as Dawson Lindquist threw it away. Can't have that from your senior. 54-52, Linquist is off the inbounds pass. Full court press here for Moffitt County. And Linquist almost didn't see Kreisig wide open in the corner. Kreisig gives it up to, to Kellen Adams. And a timeout's going to be called here by Coach Van Dahl as the Sailors were about ready to get called for a 10-second violation. Yeah, usually you don't see that with the Sailors. Typically it's get the ball to a ball handler and kind of clear out and trust them to beat the one-on-one. -on -one. But they are trying to slow the game down, trying to run off a little bit of time. So you kind of see them in that, that V pattern with three guys kind of working the backcourt there, passing it back and forth, trying to see what opens up in the middle, start trying to see what opens up down court as well. But just nothing happening right there. Great call by Coach Randall getting the time off off. off. <laughs> right before uh, the 10-second call was awarded to the Moffitt County Bulldogs who are playing some pretty good defense here late. But the Sailors ahead by two with a minute 49. They really got to play some smart basketball here. Got to play some smart basketball. And let me tell you, I like what Kellen Adams has been able to do so far this game. But I don't know if he's necessarily the right player to have when you're taking the ball up because the last thing you want is to get a 10-second call or to get trapped in the corner and have them throw it away. That's just not what you want. So I want my, my, my better ball handlers, maybe my older experienced guys, with the rock in their hands it, during this time. I like Kellen Adams a lot, but, I mean, Coach Van Dahl has been playing him quite a bit tonight. But it's good reps for it's good reps for someone who hasn't got a lot of minutes for sure. He's been playing absolutely excellent tonight. Here's Kreisig. Kreisig drives in and pulls it out. And that ball, it looked to be just tipped. It should be tipped. And they're gonna call us the Sailors for an over and back. Uh, that, I don't know, Ryan. Yeah. That, that looked like that pass was tipped up. Yeah, that, I don't think that that would that it would have gotten that velocity coming off. It went straight up in the air, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, a, a questionable call on that. In this situation, though, you and I might have the better angle from up here. So either way, another timeout here with 1.34 on the clock. So the Sailors now, we're in the midst of a pretty long minute that has passed. And we'll take a quick shout-out to... We'll, we'll take a quick moment to say a shout-out to some of our sponsors here on 105.7 KTYV. And on the World Wide Web at SEMORadio.com. Want to say a quick shout out to our friends at the Paoli Group. If you are searching for your own prime real estate, <laughs> real estate, give them a call at 870-0552. 
Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated, the contractor's choice, the homeowner's friend, and Yampa Valley Bank, the Yampa Valley's only locally owned bank, member FDIC. One minute, 34 seconds to go on the clock. Kelly Meek Gymnasium, Lowen Epstein, Ryan Hansen. Keep your dials locked in, folks, because it's about to get fun. Sailors beating the crosstown rival Bulldogs 54 to 52. Bulldogs throwing it in in their offensive zone. Here we go. Towering shot. That's no good from Jordan Carlson. Carlson loses it, and the Sailors handle it. Crowd wanted to travel on the floor there. Sailors aren't going to get it. And Kreisig now in the corner over to Rowan. Kreisig works it around the horn. It's Kellen Adams. Adams now over to Rowan. Back down to Kreisig. He could ice the game right here. Back to Rowan. Top of the key. Timeout called by Coach Van Dahl. One, excuse me, no timeout. It's going to be a holding call against the Bulldogs. Was that against... Yeah, it was against the Bulldogs. They Wesley said counts. Count. Yeah, it was Wesley Counts. The ref got the wrong number there, so... Sailor's going to inbound it again. And now it's another foul called, this time on Thane Kitchen. The Bulldogs have one more foul to give before they're, they're in the bonus. Next foul, the Sailors will be in the bonus. It's given up to Kellen Adams. He's got 102 on the clock, running away from pressure. Adams dumps it off to Linquist. Linquist drives in, and he's going to get fouled. That'll be two. Linquist had Pollard wide open there into the basket for a second. Maybe he was looking to run off some extra time, but the other four players, other than Dawson, who is shooting free throws right now, kind of huddling on the sideline with Coach Van Dahl, all getting on the same page, which we talked about is so important. Did they say that foul was on the floor, or is he going to get two for a shooting foul? I think, he, I think they're going to say it was a shooting foul, and he'll take two. So he misses the first one. Linquist will have one more. And Jared Chacon, the senior, checks out here. Miles Simpson checks back in for the Bulldogs. It's going to be Linquist at the line for one more. 55.7 seconds on the clock. 54-52. And Linquist makes the second one. 55-52. Here we go. It's the Bulldogs from the far side. It's going to be Miles Simpson over to Carlson. Jordan Carlson back to Simpson. Far side, top corner. And a foul is going to be called on Eric Pollard a holding call in the paint and so the Sailors no worries they're up and they have fouls to give but it's uh, I'm still not sure I saw it Ryan yeah you know just you know Landon Nehera and Eric Pollard two big guys down there just battling in the post and I'm sure that's how they like the game to be played but unfortunately Eric Larkin called for the hold with his hands up I think the ref was more in reference to the hook on the arm there. Inbounds pass from Moffitt County, missed shot. Ball goes out of bounds. The shot was from Jordan Carlson. And now the Sailors are going to take it back with 34 seconds to play. Connor Hansen trying to check in the game here, and, and we're going to see a timeout from Moffitt County. So 55-52, you just threw the ball away. I mean, who... What, what's your game plan here if you're Moffitt County, Ryan? I think they're probably going to either go for the foul, obviously, try to hope for some missed free throws, or they could try a, try and implement a really tight press full court, maybe man press, maybe a 1-3-1 one, one type of look, try to get a trap, try to get a steal, and get a quick turnover, quick bucket off of that, and then get right back into it, because then if they could get it near a tie or maybe even hit a 3 for the tie, as you saw, Thane Kitchen can... You saw him in the warm-up shooting. So, so if you do get it back theoretically, are you saying go for the three-point shot down by three, or are you saying go for two and play it from there? If you get a quick turnover here, they very well could go for the two-point bucket and then immediately go back. But if it takes, you know, over three to five seconds, I don't know. I feel like you go for the three with that tight of a game. It's all dependent. And so with 34.2 on the clock, Sailors up by three. Moffitt County is going to need a huge stop here. Sailors on the floor to close this one out. Kellen Adams 
obviously coach has a lot of confidence in him as he comes out onto the floor to close this game out. Connor Hansen, Granger Rowan, Dawson Linquist on the inbounds pass, and of course, Jake Kreisick. Linquist finds Kreisick. Kreisick threads the needle and gives it back to Linquist, and a reach-in foul is going to be called here on Miles Simpson. So Linquist will head to the free throw line. It's not a shooting foul, but rather a one and one. And Coach Van Dahl is going to have some words with his players on the floor. Linquist could a, could really start to put a nail in the coffin if he hits if he hits both of these. If he misses this one, it's all up to Moffitt County on the offensive end as he hits it. That's a huge free throw. Dawson Linquist under pressure. Makes it count. 56-52. It's a four-point game. Linquist at the line for one more. This one up and rims out. It's tipped away, and Kreisig has it, and they're going to foul Kreisig, and he'll head to the free throw line. And it looks like the Sailors are slowly stepping away with this one. Jake Kreisig is not one of the people that you'd want to put on the free throw line right now, and that is to be sure. You've seen the night that he's had. He is the last person on the court that you'd want to put on the line. Jake Kreisig, absolutely unreal night for him tonight. I'm sure he's going to remember this one for a long time. Congrats to him and, and his family. I know that's probably something that he's been thinking about since he was a, a little kid having a game like he did tonight. He's got 25 points now with the free throw, probably nearing 26, 27, as Kreisig will have one more. And he gets that one to go. So Jake Kreisig essentially icing this game from the free throw line. And never mind, Miles Simpson pulls up from 35 feet and buries it. Sailor's only down by three now. Kreisig loses it. It stays in bounds. Fade Kitchen gets it back. He's got seven seconds on the clock. Here we go in the corner. It counts for three. Off the window, no good. The Sailors are going to win the ball game as the horn sounds. And the crowd loves it. Fade Kitchen almost had a clutch play there. And the Sailors walk out of here with the W, the Steamboat Student section coming out of the, con the court to congratulate him as that's a huge win for the Sailors as they walk out of here with a 58-55 W. Man, oh man, that was fun, Ryan. Great, great ending there. Really got exciting there, but, you know, obviously a great game by Jake Kreisig and Eric Pollard really putting in work on both sides of the floor tonight. And so the Sailors go to 2-2 two and two on the year Saturday. A big game. You and I will be on the call there down in Mead, Colorado, where, they'll, where they will take on the number five team in the state. Until then, for Ryan Hanson, I'm Lowen Epstein on 105.7 KTYV and on the World Wide Web at SteamoRadio.com saying so long and good night. I'm going to try to level this, right? All right. So let's look at this. It's a stat out there. You can check it on Google, right? Four, the four quarterbacks in their first eight years had the most touchdown passes ever thrown. Peyton Manning. Dan Marino. Thanks for listening to Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM.